African Tales stories. She wrote a note and dropped it on her grandmother's grave. In the note she simply asked, Mama, what shouldn't I do for love? The following night, the curious, naive, and adventurous teenage girl went for her reply, and what she discovered shocked her to the skull. Her grandmother had replied and left it on top of her grave and its reads. My granddaughter Chidinma, love is like the rhythm of our drum. It can lift you up to the heavens but also capable of dragging you into the depths. Listen. What the, what the fuck? Listen well child. The rhythm of our drum. It can lift you up to the heavens but also capable of dragging you into the depths. Uh, okay, is it just me like, you know, um, almost all African folk tales type shit, you know what I mean? Like, it, it feels like they're all similar, you know what I mean? Like, I feel like I've heard this story, like, somewhere, I, I don't know, somehow, like, I... It, it, <laughs> Listen well, child. Never forsake your dreams for love and... Never build love on flowery speeches, because love is built only on actions and true intentions. Though frightened, she smiled and responded, Above all, Grandma, I will always remember you taught me that my heart is as precious as a calabash. I will fill it with love. Bro, I feel like all these type of stories, you know what I mean? Like, they're all over TikTok. Like, recently, like, if you make a channel, literally there's a website that, that makes these images because it's purely AI, of course. And clearly, like, you, you can make views and then literally, like, build an entire audience, you know, just making these type of videos type shit, you know what I mean? Just be good at storytelling. I mean, writing, because you don't have, you don't even have to speak, you know what I mean? Like, you just text to speech. I had chosen love. Despite the pleas of her family and the warnings of the village elders, she. But why is it gotta do ev like everything's about villages? Uh, okay, okay, of course, like we're talking about African tales, tales. But come on, man, like saying tales, it, it doesn't simply mean like you know, um, um village, right? Like. <laughs> All right, all right. Once upon a time, there lived a wise man by the name of Mamad. He never lied. All the people in the land, even the ones who lived 20 days away, knew about him. The king heard about Mamad and ordered his- And it's funny, like, I'm 100% sure, like, uh, like, there's people actually, like, who enjoy watching these type of uh, tales, right? Bro, I feel like, it's, it's, <laughs> what does everything got to do with, with kings and villages type shit, you know what I mean? Like, like, uh, like as if like it's only there shit's going on his subjects to bring him to the palace he looked at the wise man and asked mamad is it true that you have never lied it's true and you will never lie in your life i'm sure about that okay tell the truth but be careful the lie is cunning and it gets on your tongue easily several days passed and the king called mamad once again there was a big crowd the king was about to go hunting the king held his horse by the mane his left foot was already on the stirrup. He ordered Mamad, go to my summer palace and tell the queen I will be with her for lunch. Tell her to prepare a big feast. You will have lunch with me then. Mamad bowed down and went to the queen. Then the king laughed and said, Bro, this- Once yo, upon a time- The king is just a fucking douchebag, bro. Like, what the fuck? <laughs> Once upon a time, there lived a man called Okon from- Alright, it feels like this is the a real person, literally. Calabar. He relocated to Ibadan after his wedding. He loved eating dog meat. He planned to prepare a dog pepper soup, despite being warned by the locals not to eat it as it was forbidden in their community. He dismissed their advice. Oko slaughtered and held the dog. Shortly after, his wife gave birth to his son. Bro, what the fuck is this? <laughs> Yo, the AI is just creeping me around, bro. Alright, so. I heard actually, you know, in some African countries, literally like, you know, people people actually eat dogs type shit, you know what I mean? And 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 like you can go in a market where like you find these animals, like literally domestic animals being being eaten. Like literally like fried dog uh, or whatever. Who had the head of a dog and barked instead of crying. This shocked everyone and was seen as a cause for Okon's arrogance. He started having doggy children. Realizing the consequence of his arrogance, Oko felt deep regret for disrespecting the customs of Ibadan. He sought forgiveness from the villagers and vowed never to disregard their traditions again. Moral lesson, respect the custom of others. Arrogance can lead to tragic outcomes. Hope you've learned something today. Whatever you y'all wanna portray Africa's but whatever I'm saying, bro.
It is what it is though, it is what it is. ...was strong and quick to speak his mind. He was the one who led the village hunts, with a spear that never missed its mark. Yet, his temper was as fiery as the midday sun, and he often clashed with those around him. Friday, on the other hand, was like a gentle breeze that Yo, cooled that the hot afternoon. Was strong and quick to speak his mind. He was the one who led the village hunts, with a spear that never missed its mark. Yet, his temper was as fiery as the midday. Bro, it's funny, like, these tales. Okay, wait, wait a second. First. Bro, I forgot what I was about to say, bro. His <laughs> son, and he often clashed with those around him. Friday, on the other hand, was like a gentle breeze that cooled the hot afternoon. Was strong and quick to speak his mind. He was the one who led the village hunts with a spear that never missed its mark. In the heart of the ancient Bini kingdom, where the golden sunset painted the sky in hues of orange and crimson, there lived a princess whose beauty transcended the realms of mere mortal comprehension. Bisola was the only child of her parents and as such was cherished by her parents. Bisola's beauty was unmatched as her long flowing hair from the crown It is what it is. I mean, if I say it, like, you know, y'all gonna be like, oh, I'm fucking alienated type shit, you know what I mean? Like, you know, I'm a bad person, you know, like, I hate my, my, my continent type shit, you know what I mean? But come on, like, uh oh. <laughs> wow, that cascaded down her back like a waterfall of ebony silk. Such long hair had never been seen in the entire Bini kingdom. Growing up by Bisola's side, was her cousin Nike. Nike was the daughter of Soji and Folake, the king's only brother. Bisola and Nike were born around the same time and they shared the bond that surpassed familiar ties. Nike's mother Folake in the heart. So literally you just made this video just to talk about like you know um the girl being born and she exists. <laughs> Welcome to Tales from Africa. Today's question of the day is which African myth or legend fascinates you the most and why? The one that fascinates me the most is, um, if, if y'all know it, it's um, the Empire of Mali, I think, Sundiata Keita type shit. Yeah, I, I feel like, yeah. They said, like, you know, nigga, literally, like, you know, um, <laughs> yo, yo, I don't want to say it, bro. Oh, yo. African folklore is filled with amazing stories. For instance, have you heard about Anansi the spider? Drop your answers in the comments below and don't forget to subscribe for more. A burning apartment building. Flames lick the night sky and smoke billows out of the windows. Yo, the sound this, of this, sirens uh, uh -huh. and people shouting fills the air. Uh huh. Uh, after, after, after. Sola, out gathered bro, below. Bro. Among it is, them, it is, it, 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 these stories are, wow. Ms. Adebayo, a man in his 40s, who is shouting and gesturing for her to throw the baby to him. Live, my love, please. Sola whispers tearfully. She kisses her baby and throws her from the window. Adebayo <laughs> catches the baby safely in his arms. Sola disappears into the flames. Years have passed. Omadala now a young woman in her 20s walks briskly down the street carrying a basket of food she is kind bro don't tell me this is the baby that was tossed around like uh, tossed off what what in in and confident english is the city africa is the country bro the name is pentape these african tales if only like you know um there's like a real person talking yeah that would be cool like like you know with the african accent type shit you know what i mean but having them just text to speech you know what i mean like you just write it and and Fucking mosquito, bro. Bro. Please die, nigga. Please die, mosquito. Guys, if y'all want me to react to freaking horror shit, you know what I mean? Like being scared of that, like, you know, let me know in the comment section because, like, yeah, 
I just wanted to upload a video, so that's the reason why like I'm, I'm making this because like there's no drama. I don't want to talk about like the the same people over and over again. You know what I mean? Like you know, it's gonna be like yo me just hating on people. So like sometimes we need a little bit of variety types. You know what I mean? Like I I'm I'm I'm, I'm doing these African contents, but sooner I'll return to my old self, of course. You know, um, dropping commentary videos like like the the, the gaming ones type shit. You know what I mean? But as of right now, like you know, I gotta get used to the camera a little bit more. Um, yeah, it is what it is. In a small village, there were two neighbors, John, a farmer, and Paul, a fisherman. John had corn so tall it looked like it could touch the sky. Paul, on the other hand, had a magic touch with his nets, always catching more fish than he could count. Life was good until one day, John noticed Paul was making more money from his fish. Jealousy kicked in. Why should Paul have all the luck? John thought. So he decided to dig a ditch on. But it's not about luck. It's about um, hard work. You know what I mean? Paul's path to the river, thinking, if I can't have it, neither should he. But as they say, what goes around comes around. As John was digging away, he got a bit too excited and bam, he fell right into his own ditch, twisting his ankle. Now, instead of trapping Paul, John was the one stuck in a hole. Talk about digging your own grave, literally. Obviously there are portals and shit, but I'm just reacting to, bro, bro, I feel like, yo, these African tale stories, they're only good when, when you spend too much time on TikTok type shit, you know what I mean? But yeah, it is what it is. Imaginable betrayal from her whole village and those she trusted the most because they discovered she was born with both male and female private organs. They called her a bad woman and cast her out to die in the wilderness. But one day, the same people needed her to save their lives. How did all this happen and how did she react? Watch the full story in the linked video. Yeah, but then the link will send you to TikTok, bro. What the shit? In the heart of Uganda's lush impenetrable uh, forest. The river of death. Once upon a time, in a remote village in Benue State, there was a it's river always gotta be villages, bro. mystery and fear, known to all as the river of death. The village was a home to a farmer named Iyongi. Alright, uh, this is Vera story time. Vera story time. Alright. Who had two wives and two daughters. His Polygamy first type wife shit? had left behind a daughter named Sedo. His second wife born him a daughter named Mfena. Sedo was known for her beauty and hard work, earning the admiration of everyone in the village. Her stepmother and stepsister, consumed by jealousy, often starved her and burdened her with endless choice. Despite the cruelty, Sedo's spirit remained unbroken. Every morning, she would fetch water from the village train before down. What the fuck? One evening, Sedo's What the fuck? Why would you... Uh, okay. Why would you have, like, a, a nice-looking check? Literally, like, you know, getting water from the river type shit. Like, doing doing nasty shit. Like, why? Like, what, what the fuck, bro? Okay, I've never been to the village. So, of course, like, don't judge me for that. But, it, 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 come on, man. <laughs> what the fuck? Mother and stepsister planned to send her to wash clothes at the river of death, intending to get rid of Sedo. Sedo pleaded with her stepmother to wash the clothes at the village train, but her stepmother's heart was cold and unyielding. If you love this story, please comment for part two. Bro, part two, like you just want to. There was an evil tree in the village of Ikuku. <laughs> Whenever the tree cries, someone dies. Anyone who tries to run away from the village dies instantly. This made the villagers very worried. They all wondered who will be next. They made so many sacrifices to appease the tree, but the wicked evil tree continued crying. Meanwhile, in the village, there was a young couple who were expecting a child. Bro, why does they never want to be like, bro? Nigga, nigga, bro, he looks like me, bro. What the, what the, okay. How to be taken by the tree. So immediately the child was born. They rushed to the river with a basket guys, and I set feel like, the child. Okay, they're using these handsome dudes that look like me. Yeah, guys, I feel like. 
Yeah, I look good, bro. I look good. Actually, be because they're using these handsome African dudes, like, in the video. So, that, that, and these dudes look like me. So, exactly, like, I I'm, I'm gonna head on and say that, you know. Yeah, bro looks good, but he's stupid. That's, that's, <laughs> last story. And, uh, yeah, I feel like, I feel like I, I just need to go outside, bro. In a beautiful African village nestled between the hills where the sun painted the earth and the palm trees whispered secrets. Damn. They live what a fucking literature. Like the, the, the level is just insane, bro. What it, it feels like I'm just reading a book, literally. What the girl named Uli. She was known for her unusually large ear. Bro, this is so fucking scary. Like AI, come on, like oh, oh she, what? the fuck bro it looks like she's got three heads but but it's just the ears what the shit yes her ears stood out like delicate wings against her dark skin from a very young age uli faced ridicule the other children pointed laughed and called her all sort of names their words hurt so much like stinging bees they teased with their laughter echoing through the dusty streets Uli's mother, Madame Agbo, tried to shield her from the cruelty. <laughs> what did she say? Like, what? What? What's the name? Oh my days, bro! These these names. Oh yo, what the fuck? Dusty streets. Uli's mother, Madame Agbo, tried. <laughs> oh man, yo, yo what the. Yo, what the? <laughs> 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 Tried to shield her from the cruelty. She braided Uli's hair to cover her ears, but the whispers persisted. Now, wow, which guy is more picking with gear like trumpets? I see that if my mate get that picking, I would all trans since for bush. I didn't tell you. <laughs> her age mates avoided her like plague. They refused to play with her, so Uli was mostly found alone. As she grew, her ears became even bigger. The village elders shook their heads, muttering about bad luck and causes. But See, Uli's that's, father, that's the type of shit. Like, you know, like, whenever something bad's going on, you know, everybody's got to be superstitious. Like, like you know, I, I can come out with ideas. You know, you know what? Like, let's burn her alive. So, so you know, the, the curse might go along, uh, might go away, wh whatever. But that's, that's some messed up shit that I just said, bro. But just to say that, you know, like, it, it's got to be some, like, it's, it's got to have something to do with superstitious beliefs type shit, you know what I mean? And even the activities, you know what I mean? Like, let's say, like, in a household when somebody is just going insane, you know what I mean? For example, like, the day I, I created my YouTube channel, you know, when I was like, oh, yeah, I got to become a YouTuber, like, I'm a YouTuber. Everybody thought I was a fucking insane person, like, you know, like, like, I'm losing my mind, I was, I was crazy type shit, you know what I mean? And, and then they had to say, oh, yeah, there's a demon, like, inside me, type shit, I'm possessed. What, what the fuck is this shit, bro? Like, okay, just, just in a joking way, like, nobody said that, but, like, like, like the way they talk to me, they'd be like, yo, oh, um, shit, what, what the fuck am I even trying to explain, bro? Baba Egoli remained silent, a man of few words, his eyes filled with sorrow. He cried, lamented, and asked the girls why they had given him a daughter with such ears. As Uli grew, her mysterious Damn. ears began to display. On some days, it looked very big and mighty. On other days, it looked moderate. The villagers laughed. Oh boy, now wow, which guy here be this one now? Who will marry this guy one? I fit pity and shall marry her my second wife. <laughs> Look here, Kwa, even her seventh wife, I no go marry this girl with her elephant ear. Uli cried, but every market day, her mysterious ears kept changing into different shapes and forms, and the villagers would sing and chant derogatory songs. When guy, is it just me? Like she could actually cut this part like a little bit, and then and then have it normal. Whenever she passed by, several years passed, and Uli turned twenty-five. She began to find solace under the big ancient mango tree, their branches reaching for the sky. 
Uli believed they held secrets, the whispers of generations past. She would sit under the mango tree every evening, crying and asking the gods why. One evening, as Uli sat under the mango tree, crying profusely, a wise old woman appeared before her and started consoling her. My child, your ears are not a cause. They are a gift. Listen closely See, and you guys, will hear the okay. word. It's, it's neither a curse or, nor a, a freaking gift. Like, it's, it's just like... Bro, cut it off, bro. Secrets very soon. Why? Why do I bear these ears? I am tired of these ears. Worry not, my child. Good news awaits you very soon. As Uli walked back home that evening, her heart fluttered. Could it be true? She thought to herself. She vowed to embrace her ears and turn them into a vessel of wisdom. From that day, every evening, she met the old wise woman under the ancient mango tree. They would both gist Damn. and laugh. The Bro. old wise Bro, the hair, the hair made her even uglier. Like, like no cap for her. Like, what the fuck, bro? This woman also taught her how to pay attention and listen to things from afar. From then, Uli no longer tried to hide her ears it's or like cry. I, she walked. Her head looks like a fucking clover. You know what I mean? <laughs> to the village stream she also adorned her ears with colorful beads and tiny bells whenever she walked by and the villagers tried to laugh at her she smiled and laughed at them too her ears became her compass guiding her through life's twists and turns she learned to hear the unspoken the hopes of the elderly the dreams of the young and the secrets hidden in the wind tired of this bro I'm, I'm, I'm tired of this bro i can't do this bro yo yo come on bro this fuck tall shit like guys get me to 10 likes <laughs> who begs for 10 likes bro people are saying oh 1 million likes 1100 what the fuck bro yo 10 likes and i'll do a part two of these uh, african tales but, but this time like you know let me know like if you got a, a tiktoker that you watch you know who may, who drops these type of videos so like you know i can react to them but yeah it is what it is bro uh, i feel like yeah um, i need to stop this bro otherwise i'm gonna go crazy bro like i feel like i'm, I'm gonna have like a, a freaking nightmare 100 percent. like you know these fucking years have a, like bro i've watched a lot of these like the entire day okay I've, I've done some color grading actually okay i can't show those but yeah i'm learning a lot of color grading these days bro but it is what it is um i've, I've done like this it's been like one hour i think yeah one hour of me recording um, um these videos so yeah i'll drop them as soon as like um um yo i feel like I actually you know edit them yeah it is what it is guys it is what it is i see that like yo um y'all are not subscribed to my, my my channel and i can also tell like um whenever i like africans are more subscribed to my channels than than you know um people outside of africa of course but i will definitely come back to this um, western you know type of um, commentary type shit you know what i mean but yeah it is what it is bro english is the city africa is the country bro um yeah what the freak bro what the freak yeah just let me know if you you, you want the freaking part two but i feel like yeah these these videos are kind of damn insane like, but the lyric Del delia story time she's she's i feel like yeah she's the best african storyteller like she comes like with greater fiction type shit you know what i mean but it is what it is, bro. It is what it is. Um, just go on TikTok and follow her. I don't have a TikTok account, so of course, like, you know, I can't follow anybody. But it is what it is, guys. Um, it should be your boy, Pin Tape. And uh, yeah. Peace.